Okay, everybody, welcome to the second episode of my tutorial on how to use OpenAI Retro with um, various neural networks. We're starting today with uh, an extremely simple and just interaction with the environment, basically showing you what is necessary to use the OpenAI network. It's extremely simple, but we will go through it step by step, and I'll explain to you the best that I understand what each function does. Um, then after that, if we got time, we will install Python Neat, and uh, we'll start working through that. But that's that's a bit more complex. So last episode, we set up our um, gym environment, a retro gym environment. If you don't know how to do that, I recommend you go back one episode and watch that. It's an extreme detail, <laughs> probably too much detail. But uh, you can also just go to the uh, OpenAI Retro GitHub and find all the stuff there. So. First things, we need to go back to our tutorial folder, which if you followed last time, you uh, you made one, or whatever folder you used. In that folder, we have our uh, environment, our virtual environment, Venv. So we're just going to source bin activate ourselves back into that. Uh, you can see here, uh, we've installed, in the last episode, we installed Jim Retro, and it installed the rest of those things. That's it, that's all we got installed so far. Okay, so to start, um, there's a couple things you need to do. We basically need to import um, Retro. That's the uh, OpenAI Gym Retro environment. It's uh, super good. The We need to create an environment. This is how you do that. Actually, it might just be yeah, ret retro.make. Uh, and then you need to specify the game and um, game and state to load. So to show you where you get that, you've got to go into your um, into t in the folder that we created. We created the we get cloned the gym retro, which gave us this retro. I guess it's right here. Easier way to show you the gym retro folder. Inside that is the uh, a retro folder. Then data. And then actually, let's just go back to that. So here's tutorial one. That's what we're working in right now. We go into Gym Retro, Retro, Data. And then the, these three folders are all full of um, gym environments. I, I don't know how to describe it. They're, they're uh, like pre-made by the guys at OpenAI, um, data files and scenario files and stuff. So let's find Sonic. Uh, this name right here, Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic the Hedgehog dash Genesis is what you need to put into the first part of your retro make environment. Um, and then the second one you need a state. So we're going to pick Green Hill Zone Act 1. Put that in there. And you can actually specify the scenario file you want to use if you have a different name. If you specify nothing, it uses this one. Uh... So since you guys probably don't know, you may know, the scenario file includes um, states for when you're done, uh, which is a value that the um, emulator outputs, and a reward number. Uh, we currently have our set to X. This is not the one that it normally comes with. It actually originally comes with score, and the value is 10. So I'll, I'll show you the difference between those things in a second. Uh, we went over this last time, but these values are RAM addresses. Uh, and then what happens is the emulator dumps the RAM addresses and you can it'll use them plus the scenario file to generate a reward. I'll show you all that in a sec. Okay, so now we've created an environment. Um, I'm not really sure if you have to do this or not. This I think it's kind of like a, like a reset button on the emulator. Uh, that should get us to a point where it runs. Let's see if it runs. Do we have it in here? Python dot one pi. Yeah. Okay. It runs with no errors. That means everything's working okay so far. Uh, you do need to loop. So we're gonna loop while not done. We should specify done. Done is a variable from the um, emulator, but since we haven't started running yet, we won't. Okay. So. Um, Let's think about this. 
the f the environment. So basically, the thing you're going to run that will step uh, every frame of the the emulator. It basically happens one step at a time. Uh, is a, it's the env.step function. And inside the env.step function, you need an action. Uh, an action is a set of buttons from the Genesis. So like there's 12 buttons on the Genesis. So there's an array of 12 buttons. Now let me show you how that looks. So we're going to go, we're going to set action equal to, they give us the, the OpenAI retro gym has this really great thing called action space sample, which will just pick a random set of um, button presses for us. So we're not going to do this yet. We're just going to do that. And then we're going to run this. And what you'll see is a, yeah. So these are, there should be 12. These one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 buttons on the Genesis controller. And these are just, you know, is this, is this button on? Is this button off? Is this button on? Is this button off? It's not, I don't actually know offhand which ones are which. I'm pretty sure one of these, I think this is up, left, down, right. I'm not 100% sure. We'll have to check that. Uh, one of these two is definitely uh, A and B, make, make Sonic jump. Um, what you do is you dump the output of those into the end step, and um, that is the input into the emulator every frame. So let's see. The other thing you can do is you can do a m.render and that'll actually let you see what's happening so here we go uh, so you'll see Sonic's jumping around there the uh, the code that we've written basically does a random sample of the controller which it pumps into the emulator which then uh, renders one frame forward and loops until done the done condition set for Sonic right now is him dying three times in a row so that's probably not going to happen because he's just bouncing around like an idiot. Okay. Um, so what else can I show you? Though this is like the default thing to get him moving. You can directly specify uh, a. You don't have to use a random sample. In fact, you shouldn't. Normally, what you use is the output from a neural network, which would give you twelve outputs. Let's pick one of these. I think. Where's one that I'm pretty sure goes right? <laughs> I think one of these goes right. Let's see. So we can specify this right. And run it again. This should get him. Yeah, he's running to the right. So now he'll do it three times. And then, oh. <laughs> yeah. Beep, 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 beep. Okay. So the other thing we should do is we probably should set uh, the env.set step action function here uh, dumps a bunch of variables that are very useful. So we'll do info. So ob is uh, the um, image of the screen at the time of the action. Reward is the amount of reward that he earned from what was in the scenario file. So score 10x. Uh, score, I'm not actually sure what it comes from. I think it's from getting rings. We can look into that later. Done is whether or not the done condition has been achieved. So for example, if he's lost all of his lives. And info is just a dictionary of all of the values you've set in data. Right here. Okay, see you. Let's print these guys out. Um, let's do ob.shape for, let's do image. And then we'll do reward. And then we'll do done. This will be true or false. And then we'll print out the info. That should be a dictionary. Uh, I guess additionally we can print out the action. OK. 
Okay, so this is the input into the emulator. This is the output as an image, uh, the output of the reward, whether or not it's done, and then the total set of stuff, and I'll show you how that works. Okay, so Sonic's gonna be running. And there you go. He, uh, he died three times, and the done condition was eventually set to true. But otherwise it was false. So yeah, let's go through this. We've got action. That's the input. We'll go up one actually. So so action. These are the values input into the emulator. Image. This is the shape of the image. So it's 224 by 320 by 3. So it's 224 pixels by 320 pixels by three colors. The reward was zero because obviously he wasn't moving to the right. I think the reward should be more than zero in some of these. Where was it? Uh... Oh no, we haven't set the score, not, uh, yeah. Um, and then done is true because he died three times in a row. That's it, it's extremely simple. Let's change something though. Let's go into the scenario file, which is in the Jim Retro Data Stable Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis file, so it's this file here. And we're gonna change the reward from score to X, which is uh, one of the values that we have in our data.json file, X. It's actually Sonic's uh, horizontal position. I'm going to change the reward to 1. So we have Sonic set to run to the right uh, and do nothing else. So we should see a pretty, we should see a repeating um, reward. Let's not print all this out. Let's just print. We don't need this. Let's just print his reward and the action. And as we know, if he dies three times in a row, the... Um, let's put it all in one line. I'm going to be clearer. So now if he dies three times in a row, uh, it will end. Oops. Get away. So there you go. This is the size of the reward. So for every X, uh, every frame, how far he moves, he gets an equivalent amount of reward. So this, this, this action led to him moving forward basically four pixels, which gave him four reward. Uh, you can obviously sum them all up and do like a total reward or whatever, but that's how it works. Okay, guys. So in the next episode, we'll install Neat and uh, get going with the, the uh, neural network. Cheers.